It is time to get into some cruise news today here on High Seas Cruising. I'm Chris. I will be your host today. So let's jump right in, starting with Royal Caribbean. Actually, we're going to start off talking about Laverty, Haiti. Now, Laverty was a popular cruise stop for the Royal Caribbean group. However, if you remember back in March, they had 4,000 inmates escape from prison there in Haiti. This caused safety concern, it caused civil unrest in the area, and it caused the Royal Caribbean to decide to suspend stops in Laverty, Haiti until it was safe again for cruise passengers to go there. Now, there have been recent developments in Haiti. There have been an increase in peacekeeping efforts. Airports are fixing to reopen. And starting here in October of 2024, Royal Caribbean will be putting Laverty back on itineraries. So for those passengers that love that port stop, are looking for cruises that have it in there in the itinerary, well, starting here in October of 2024, it is going to be returning to Royal Caribbean cruises. Now, continuing with Royal Caribbean, we're going to talk about some of their upcoming beach club projects that they have going on in Nassau, Bahamas. Cosmo, Mexico, and a new project that the CEO, Michael Bailey, has mentioned, Q&A sessions on board a Royal Caribbean ship. Now, the Royal Beach Club Paradise Island, which is located there in Nassau, Bahamas, is scheduled to be open between October and December of 2025. The Royal Beach Club in Cozumel, Mexico, is expected to be opened in 2026, and a new project, a new private island destination. After the success of Coco Key, Royal Caribbean is looking to open a new private island, but this time in the South Pacific. Now, that is expected either in 2026 or 2027, but we don't have a whole lot of information on it yet. He said there's a plan in place. Royal Caribbean has a plan. They're working the plan, but they haven't announced specifically where this private island may be, what amenities it's going to have, what's going to be on it, what itineraries it will be a part of, just that it's scheduled to be in the South Pacific, and it will be done to continue the success they have had with Coco Key. Now, we have talked a lot about propulsion problems recently. The Carnival Vista, been in all of the cruise news stories, has had itinerary changes, currently had to cancel a cruise while they're working on the engines there in Port Canaveral. But the Carnival Vista is not the only cruise ship out there with a propulsion problem. Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas, which has had multiple propulsion problems this year. Well, she's had another one this past week. Back on September the 8th, Radiance of the Seas was scheduled to be in Juneau, Alaska. However, developed a propulsion issue, a technical issue as Royal Caribbean calls it, caused them to be several hours late arriving in Juneau, Alaska. Now, back in April, Radiance of the Seas was doing a repositioning cruise from Los Angeles up to Vancouver to begin the Alaska season. That's when her propulsion problems began. She had to skip both port stops, head straight into Vancouver for repairs. They were not able to fix her in a timely manner, resulted in the first Alaskan sailing for Radiance of the Seas to be canceled over the propulsion problems. They did get it fixed. She did continue on, yet here we are again with another propulsion problem. Now, she was supposed to arrive in Juneau at 2 p.m., depart at 10 p.m., giving guests eight hours in port. However, due to the issue, she didn't get there till around 5.30, which greatly reduced the amount of time that people had in Juneau, Alaska. Now, where this really affected passengers was shore excursions. The majority of them were scheduled for earlier in the day, which means, yeah, they got still got to go to Juneau. They still got to go around the town and check a few things out. But the majority of the shore excursions, they couldn't happen. Now, of course, if you booked it through the cruise lines, all of that was refunded. However, those who had booked independent tours, of course, any refunds or cancellations goes through them, through the third-party company, and not through the cruise lines. So it's the passenger's responsibility. Now, Royal Caribbean did compensate the passengers. If you had an interior or an ocean view stateroom, you received $125 onboard credit per stateroom. Balcony staterooms received $175 per stateroom. Suites got $250 and an additional $25 for three or more guests in the stateroom. Now, Radiance of the Seas, she's an older cruise ship. She's been with Royal Caribbean for a long time, which means her maintenance requirements are higher. And hopefully this is something Royal Caribbean can get fixed to get 
can get control of. Hopefully this doesn't mean that Radiance of the Seas may be nearing the end of her life. But hopefully that's not the case. This is something they'll get control of and Radiance of the Seas will continue to carry guests into the future. And finally, the Carnival Spirit sailing in Tracy Armed Fjord up in Alaska on September the 5th. A small chunk of ice made contact with the side of the ship while she was sailing through the fjord. Now, if you've been through the fjords before, you've seen the ice, it floats around, it's all around the ship, and a small piece did make contact with the side of the ship. That much is true. Now, the ship did come to a stop. There was a smaller boat in the area that did a visual inspection. They checked the inside, of course, made sure everything was good. No damage to the ship, no problems with the ship. She continued on her journey. Now, with the amount of ice that I've seen floating around up there when we took our Alaska cruise, I'm actually surprised they don't bump into them a little more often. But what really made me, I guess, scratch my head and chuckle a little bit are some of the stories and headlines that were associated with this. Cruise ship hits iceberg. I've seen the word Titanic in some of these stories. The way they write them, it's almost like if you've seen the movie Titanic when the ship is sinking, you have the orchestra up on the top deck playing music as the, the ship is going down. That's almost the type of feeling that some of these stories wanted to put into you. What's really just a small story, boy, they tried to make it an epic event. Now, back in June of 2022, the Norwegian Sun did hit a much bigger piece of ice. Of course, there was dense fog, bad weather conditions. They were up near the Hubbard Glacier. Now, they did have damage to the ship. The remainder of the cruise had to be canceled while the ship was getting repaired. So, yeah, I mean, damage can happen. Incidences can happen. It could have been much worse. Okay, but for the Carnival Spirit, it was a bump into some ice. It was enough that it broke the ice up as, uh, once it struck the side of the ship. But that sure doesn't stop some people from saying ship hit iceberg and reminding them of the Titanic. All right, and that is going to be our video for today. If you've enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, do me a favor and hit subscribe. It is free to do so. Helps our channel grow. Let you know anytime we put out a new video. Hope everyone out there is having a really great day. And like always. We will see you out on the high seas.